Hello, sixth grade. Mrs. Dominic here. Uh, nice to see you again. Today is the beginning of our grand adventure where we are learning online through video, through uh, digital media of all kinds. So uh, please bear with me. I'm going to attempt to do a few things. I'm going to tell you at some point during the video to pause it and try something and then keep playing it. Uh, if you have questions on this, you are to uh, get back to me through um, our normal digital means, through Teams, through email, things of that nature. Uh, and I will get back to you as soon as I can if you need assistance. When you are completed with this project, whether it takes you one day, three days, you want to try it multiple times, that's all on you. But when you are done, you are going to be uploading an image of it to your art team style um, in the just in the general discussion and I will put a spot there so that it is easy for you to find and upload your image and it'll be really clearly labeled okay all right today because this is our first adventure we're going to be doing a teeny tiny bit of review our review is going to be over how to draw 3D forms. Uh, you would be really surprised at the number of students that I have currently who cannot successfully draw things like a cylinder, a cone, a box or cube or um, a dome. And so we're going to be working on that today. Uh, to do this, you're either going to need some sort of scrap paper. If you've got note cards, that would be good. If you've got um, pencil, eraser, things that you, your preferred materials to practice drawing these shapes. Um, you choose them and keep, move on with it. I like to use note cards for this because they are practice and this I don't feel bad about crumpling up and throwing away later. Also, this is small. I can hold on to it and reference it while I'm working on my bigger final piece. So first thing we're going to do today, first shape is a cylinder. For a cylinder, uh, like... Oof, this one, for example, not a perfect cylinder, but it's a cup, right? In order to show that something is a cylinder, even though, um, think about your pop cans, your cups, your mugs, even though they are round, the opening is round, when you turn it on its side, as if an artist were drawing it like this, the sides are more or less straight, the top is flat, and so is the bottom. But how do we show the fact that it goes around? Uh, the artist's perspective is not perfect. We need to include information so that the people who are viewing our drawing understand what we are seeing. We need to translate what's actually there so that it's easy for the viewer to view. So in that case, for us, we take things like cylinders and we tilt them ever so slightly so that we can see part of the top, and we also see the curve of the bottom, but the sides still appear straight. When you draw that, the top, even though it is a circle, is smushed, and so it appears more along the lines of a an oval. So for me, I would just go around the sides, skinny, squat, oval. The sides of my cylinder would then be straight, or as straight as you can make them freehandedly. And then the bottom of my cylinder is a curve. Your hand can draw a curve this way much easier than it can this way or this way. So I always turn my papers sideways when I do the base of anything that is curved, and you're going to see that a lot today. So for me, I just curve around like that. The bottom of a cylinder is not a U. You can end up with some truly atrocious cylinders. If you have a top that is too round, sides that are very straight, and then a bottom that's a U, you can end up with something that looks like who knows what. If you end up with, I've seen plenty of them that have like round tops and straight sides and then a straight bottom. 
this person is trying to look at something from the top and perfectly from the side at the same time, that's not going to happen. Though this thing looks like it's very stable and flat on the bottom and it won't fall over, not going to happen. This thing looks like a thimble, you know, something that someone would wear on their finger when they're sewing. It has this such a rounded bottom that it would just fall over. There's no way it's going to stand up. This one, however, has enough of a curve that we can still believe that it is flat. These little extra bits, obviously, you would go back and erase. But that is a cylinder. Just now, I would like for you to pause the video and practice drawing a cylinder on a scrap piece of paper, a note card, or post-it note, whatever, until you are comfortable and you have something that is believably a cylinder. Go ahead and do that now. The next shape that we are going to be going over is a cone. A cone is similar to a cylinder where it is round on the bottom, but we don't have the benefit of seeing the top of that shape as well because a cone comes to a point. So for a cone, it is almost easier than a cylinder. You start it off just like a regular ordinary triangle. However wide or skinny you would like it, that is your choice. Uh, and then again, that same sort of smiley, shallow curve on the bottom. This is your basic cone. This shows up in um, a lot of architecture. Uh, this is also how you would start drawing an eyeball from the side, you know, things of that nature. But I digress. Take a moment, take your scrap piece of paper, pause the video, practice drawing a cone until you are satisfied and then continue on. Our third shape is going to be a box and there are many ways to attempt drawing a box. Uh, I'm going to show you the two that make the most sense in my head um, and I'm also going to show you a couple of different ways that <clears throat> children are traditionally taught how to draw a box or a cube by some well-intentioned person. Some of you are possibly uh, giggling and jumping ahead and attempting to draw it right now. Um, one of the one of those well-intentioned people possibly showed you how to do this at some point, whether it was a math teacher or you know an older sibling, a parent. Um, but this is one of like the cheating ways to draw a cube. Okay. And it's kind of nice because you can truly see all of the faces when you're done with it. Because we know a cube has six faces to it. And this diagram will show all six very clearly. However, it is not a good way to draw a cube when you are drawing it for artistic purposes, usually. Okay, but basically what you do is you draw a square and you overlap it with another square because a true cube would have squares for all sides. Then <laughs> the trick is to take the corners that are similar and connect them. Okay, so you have probably seen this and you end up with the see-through cubes, which shows you the bottom, the side, top, left, back side, and the front side, okay? These are all great, except for the fact that most artists' cubes aren't see-through, and most of them are not these perfect square things. So what an artist does instead is draws the corner, where the front face and the side face meet up, this line, right here. When I reference a corner, I mean that. I mean the seam between the two sides, the two faces. That is what I usually draw first. So for me, one of the ways to draw a cube is like this. I'll draw the corner, that seam where the two sides meet up, 
And then I'll draw the side facing me most directly. Okay, so whether it's a cube or rectangle or whatever, that's the next step. If I can see the corner, which I know that it's supposed to, that means I can see the side. And the side, you can't just go out to the side because that would be too flat. This secondary side that you see needs to look like it is disappearing, going back in space away from me. And in order to do that, I'm going to make these two things come together and get smaller. So from the bottom, I'm going to go up and from the top, I'm going to go down. And you don't have to make it super duper long. You don't have to make it super duper tiny. But they do have to gradually seem like they're coming together. And then another vertical line for the back. This shows me the front of my box and the side of my box. What if I also need to draw the top of my box? That is also a possible situation that could come up. If I want to also show the top of my box, I'm still going to start with that corner where the two sides meet. There's my corner. From this line, I'm going to draw diagonal lines up and going opposite directions, like as if you were drawing an open book from the back. So for example, on this side, I'm going to go up. And on this side, I'm going to go up. And I'm going to try to go up at similar type angles. Same thing with the other side, up and up. Again, at similar type angles. The sides of my box are vertical and they will always be vertical. This now is the front and the side of my box. I have rotated my box ever so slightly more. So now both of these two sides are skewed a little bit. They're not square anymore. They are diamonds, they are parallelograms, however you want to think about them. To include the top of my box, I need to pay attention to the two top lines. Every single side of this box is going to be a parallelogram. So whichever direction this line is going, this one is also going. And whatever direction this one is going, the other one is going to copy it. Now I have the left, the right face, and the top face of my box. Any type of situation may come up. Now, all three of these I drew to be cubes, squares, blocks, however you want to think about it. But if I wanted a really flat, wide space, I could do that too, very easily. Make my corner really short. Make my sides really long and then make my make that side really long right this back here then would go straight across and this one would follow that same diagonal as that side now i've got something that's wide and flat more like a pizza box less like a little wooden block or a cube of cheese Okay, always start with that corner. At this time, you know what I'm going to say, pause the video, practice drawing cubes. This is possibly the most complicated one. So pause the video, practice drawing them until you are comfortable with them and you have some successful cubes. Then continue the video some more. For our last shape, we're going to be doing a dome. For this particular project, we're not going to really need anything that's perfectly round. If you wanted to draw a sphere like, oh, guess what? Here it is. A little shadow at the bottom. Done. 3D sphere, right? Oof, it's a ball sitting there. 
Surprise! Okay, but for our project, we're going to need to perfect the idea of the dome. A dome is interesting because it is one of these cut in half, but it's round in all directions. But the roundness this way to an artist looks different than the roundness this way to an artist. The circumference will look different than the archway at the top. So because of that, I like to start with the circumference first. That's that initial curve. So here's my initial curve. Because I have that, I can make my dome look like any shape I want. I can make it look like, um, I can make it look like a perfect circle type dome. So it would be more like Greek style. I can make it look like a stepped dome. I can have a dome on top of a dome. There's all different things you can do with a dome. You can make them, this is called an onion shaped dome like they have in the Taj Mahal. All kinds of shapes. But the most traditional dome is just the curved bottom and then a taller, wider, curved top. Okay, what am I gonna say? Pause the video, practice drawing these domes. And then come back and we'll talk about what we're gonna do with all of these shapes. All right, so here we go. For this project today, you're gonna need a sheet of paper. Uh, this one is smaller than normal because it's just what I had in the house. You could also just as easily do this on a note card, a little one, a big one, doesn't matter. For this project, we're going to rely on these shapes that we started with. The cylinder, the cone, the cube, and the dome. With these basic shapes, we are going to be building some fantasy architecture. We're going to build a fantasy type building. Use your imagination. Try to put these shapes together so that you can come up with a fantasy type building. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and try to recreate one that I have done previously. And then from there, if you have the time and you want to sharpie it, color it, that is completely and utterly your choice. But for this project, we only need some pencil work. Um, any type of shading you can do would be appreciated just to differentiate spaces. Uh, but for the most part, just have fun with this, okay? Uh, I'm going to be overlapping a lot of these different shapes. So you're gonna see things um, uh, curving down or curving up, looking like they're going back in space. And uh, I'm not doing that to confuse you, uh, but this is the type of assignment where um, an artist brain can just go and play. So don't be, um, don't be alarmed by what Mrs. Dominic is drawing. Just try your best and uh, go for it. Okay, here we go.
gentlemen. That's about what I've got today. Um, I wish you luck. I know you can do this. I want to see what your imaginations can do. I'm going to be looking in your drawings to make sure that you have cylinders, cones, uh, some sort of box, and some sort of dome. Um, I think the only thing I did not personally include in mine was a cone. So, here we go. We are going to put a very skinny antenna on top of my generator there, uh, which doesn't make any sense, but that's okay. Anyway, um, I'm going to be looking for all four types of shapes in your drawings. Um, please post them as soon as you get them done onto Teams on Office. And um, I look forward to hearing from you. Stay well, everyone, and stay safe. And um, this is Dominic out. Bye.